started. Welcome to Little's Lab. Um, my name is Miss Elizabeth. Miss Kim had today off, so I am taking her place for the day. She will be back for the next Little's Lab. Um, it's just today that it's me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're talking a lot about sea creatures and sea life. So if you're a big fan of fish or sharks or under the ocean, this is probably going to be one that you will love. But before we get into our book and our app, we're gonna start with our calendar like we usually do. So give me one second and I'll get that calendar pulled up for you. All right. So those of you that have been to Little's Lab in person at Do Space, you probably remember that we have a big TV that's hooked onto the wall and it has our calendar up on it. And we have you guys come up and press the buttons to make it do things. And unfortunately, since I'm at my house today and we're not all at Do Space together, I'm gonna be the one pressing the buttons, but I would love it if you guys would play along and press the buttons on the screen at your house so we can all pretend that we're pressing the buttons together. So we're gonna go ahead and press this big play button in the middle, ready, go. All right, so this is our month and our year. So what letter does our month start with? It goes like mm, m, m. Do we know what letter that is? I'm gonna give you a second to tell whatever grown up you're watching with. If you said M, you're right, it starts with an M. And our month is May. So it's M-A-Y and that spells May. And then the year is 2020 or 2020. It's referred to both ways. So now we're gonna press this arrow down here in the bottom right corner. Ready, we're all gonna press it together. One, two, three. And up comes our... So that is all seven days of the week and every week has the same seven days in it and they always go in the same order. So you just heard them read it to you, but let's try saying them all together. Ready? We're gonna start with Sunday and it goes Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So do you know which day of the week it is today? Gonna give you a second to tell your grown up what day of the week you think it is today. Give you a hint, it's the one that's gold at the top of the calendar. If you said Saturday, you're right, it is Saturday today. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. Oh, it's Saturday. So we already talked about how the month is May and the year is 2020. And we had just said that today is Saturday. So what number is today? It's the one that's got the purple star on it. If you know what number that is, go ahead and tell the grown up that's with you. I'll give you a second. If you said nine, you are totally correct. It is the ninth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight have already happened and today is nine. So we are on Saturday, May 9, 2020. So now we're gonna press that green arrow in the corner, ready, press. And it wants us to pull them over. If we were in person, I would have someone come up to the board and move that day for me. But since we're all at home, we're gonna pretend. So go ahead and touch your screen. And we're gonna put Saturday up at the top. And then we're gonna grab our number. Do you remember what number? Did you say nine? Cause it's the ninth. So we're gonna pull the nine. <gasps> there we go. All right. So we're gonna press that green arrow in the bottom right hand corner again, cause we have one more thing to do on our calendar here. All right. So we're gonna go through all the special days that are in May. It looks like we have five holidays this month. So on the 5th, it was Cinco de Mayo, which is a holiday that they celebrate in Mexico. And we also celebrate it sometimes in America. 
And especially if you have Mexican heritage or if you're Mexican American, maybe it's a day that you celebrate. And on the fifth, it was also Teacher's Day, which is a day when we say thank you to our teachers for everything that they do for us. I know right now it's kind of weird. You might not be able to be in your preschool classroom or your kindergarten classroom where you would normally be, but I know teachers are still really important and it's extra important to tell them thank you right now because they're doing a lot of hard work for us to make sure we keep learning. So if you miss Teacher's Day, you can still tell your teacher thank you. You can tell them that any day. And coming up tomorrow is Mother's Day. So hopefully you're doing something special for Mother's Day. And that's a day when we celebrate moms and grandmas and other ladies who help to raise us and take care of us. And we maybe make them a card or take them out for breakfast or do something nice for them. So maybe since we're all at home right now, you could figure out a favorite breakfast you could make at home or you could draw them a card or do something special together, just play games, spend time with them and make sure you tell them you love them. And then on the 18th is Victoria Day and that is a holiday in Canada. And I don't know a whole lot about that one. Um, but if you are Canadian or if you have family that's Canadian, maybe you know about Victoria Day and you could teach us. Um, and then on the 25th is Memorial Day. And that's a day when we remember people who we love who have passed away and especially veterans, people who are in the military who are no longer with us. So that's what that day is. Now there might be another special day in May. I don't know for sure because birthdays are special days. So if anybody who is here today has a birthday in May, let me know in the chat and I will drag a piece of birthday cake that day and we will all say happy birthday to you. Let me look at that chat and see if anybody is having a birthday in May. I'll give you one second in case you need to type in what day your birthday in May is. And if you don't have a birthday in May, that's fine too. My birthday is in June, so it's not in May. Not all of us have May birthdays. All right, it looks like we don't have any May birthdays with us today. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our button to move on to the next screen. Ready, press that green button. Ta-da! All right, so our calendar is done. We've got all of our days and dates in place and our holidays, and we didn't have any birthdays. So, all right, we've got that covered. So I'm gonna stop sharing the calendar and we should be back to me for one second. And then I'm gonna share my screen with you so that we can all read a book together. So give me just one second to get that going for you. Let's see. All right, so we are going to open up this app called Epic. It has a whole bunch of books in it. And we're going to just drag it back to the beginning. I was practicing earlier today, so it's partway through. All right, so we're reading a book called One, Two, Three Sea Creatures, and it's going to help us to count and work on our counting skills. So, all right, we're going to count our one, two, threes. So first we have one, we have one whale tail, and then two, two walrus tusks. He's got one, two tusks there, and he's holding a toothbrush to brush his tusks with, because brushing your teeth is very important. Next we've got three, three donuts. Look at that swordfish, he's got one, two, three donuts on his nose. How silly is that? Then for four, we have a clownfish. You might recognize clownfish because that's what Nemo and Marlin are in Finding Nemo. So we've got a cute little clownfish and he's got four orange stripes. One, two, three, four stripes. He's wearing a party hat and he's got a balloon. Looks like maybe it's his birthday. That's pretty cool. Maybe he has a May birthday. I'm gonna turn the page. Five starfish rays. We've got a starfish here. He's wearing his sunglasses and he's got five points. One, two, three, four, five. 
and all stars have five points, not just starfish. And over here we have an eel, kind of like snakes, but under the water, they kind of slither around. We've got an eel and he's got six rings wrapped around him. So can you count the rings with me? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, six rings. All right, now we have a jellyfish. He's got seven jellyfish tendrils. Tendrils is what you call the legs that come down from the bottom of the jellyfish. So he's got seven of those going on. Looks like he's holding a little plant in one of them. So let's see if we can count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven jellyfish tendrils. And over here is an octopus. And just like the jellyfish, the octopus has a lot of arms. He's got eight octopus arms. And it looks like he's holding eight ice cream cones with those eight octopus arms, doesn't it? Do you think octopus eat ice cream? I don't know. I've never seen an octopus eat ice cream, but maybe they do. So we're going to count his eight arms and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of arms. Now, we've got this leopard seal over here, and he's got a really cool necklace on. Necklace is made out of nine flowers. So I know that they're super tiny, and they probably look extra tiny on your screen, but let's see if we can count all nine of those little flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh. All right, we're up to 10. Remember nine was the number for what day it was today. So 10 is one bigger than we counted on our calendar. And this little shrimp here has 10 shrimp shoes. I don't know about this guys. I don't know if shrimp wear shoes. I think maybe an octopus eats ice cream, but I don't think a shrimp wears shoes. I don't know, you'll have to tell me if I'm wrong. But we're gonna count all 10 of his little tiny shoes. Ready, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got ten shrimp shoes on. Oh, can we count even bigger than ten? I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> One to ten is fun. Here's five big numbers, then we're done. I don't know if we can count this high, guys. We might have to count by tens or by fives. So what happens if we count by fives with these 20 hammerhead sharks? So it would go five, ten, fifteen, twenty. And then we've got 40 crabs over here. Oh my gosh, 10, 20, 30, 40. And then 60 stingrays, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Whew, these are getting to be some big numbers. <gasps> 80 puffer fish, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. A hundred, can we get to a hundred? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred. We did it, we got to a hundred. There are a hundred seahorses. And if you look, 99 of them are swimming to the right, but one of them is swimming to the left. Where is he going? He was going to find more friends. And look at all these different sea creatures. There's all the ones that we saw before when we were counting. We've got our walrus with his toothbrush and our swordfish with his donuts, our octopus with all of his ice creams. But then we've also got some new friends. We've got a penguin, we've got two different kinds of whales, we've got a turtle in here, all kinds of awesome animals that you can find under the ocean. All right. So now that we have read our book, we're gonna go ahead and open our app for the day, which is also about sea life. So this app here has all kinds of cool stuff that you can do. We're gonna go back to the home for a second so you can see Coral Reef, number 10 of the Explorer's Library. All right, so we've got some different options here and we're gonna look at the seagrass. All right, so how this works is that we're gonna plant 
some grass. And grass under the ocean works a lot like grass above the ocean, where you put in the seeds. Or maybe you've helped your mom or dad plant flowers before, and you put seeds in a pot and then they grow. You see all these seeds that we're dropping? They're turning into plants. So let's drop a whole bunch of seeds. Let's get a whole bunch of grass going. And then when the sun comes out, it all grows up big and strong, just like above the sea. You need the sunlight to grow your plants. We've got all kinds of animals coming now that there's grass here. So there's some crabs that want to hide in the grass. And there's some fish that swim through the grass. All kinds of cool animals. And here comes a turtle. And turtles are vegetarian animals, which means that they eat plants. So he isn't here to eat the fish or the crabs. He just wants some of that grass. So he is going to come and eat some of this seagrass. The crabs are hanging out, hiding in the seagrass, having a good time. The fish swim through. Oh, uh-oh, there's a crab that didn't get to the grass in time, and so the peacock mantis shrimp got it. He's going to take that crab away with him. Oh, no, and that's why the crabs like to hide. Did you see how the grass is all falling over? That's because there wasn't enough sun, so I pressed the sun button in the corner. I brought the sun back, so the grass is growing again. But if you don't have enough sun, the grass is going to wilt, and it's going to fall over. So you got to make sure there's plenty of sun. If you have a plant at home, you got to put it somewhere where there's plenty of sun so that it'll keep growing and be healthy. Mr. Turtle here is coming to eat some of the grass. You can see the leaves falling off as he eats it. He's so happy. He's got little hearts coming off of him because he loves it. <gasps> Uh-oh, the sun went away. The plants are dying. Uh-oh, what's going to happen when the plants die? Let's see what happens. What happens when there's no grass? All the fish go away. And there's nowhere for the crabs to hide, so the shrimp gets them. Oh my gosh. And that is why the grass is so important and why the sun is so important, so that they all have somewhere safe that they can hide. And we're going to try one more game. We're going to try the cleaner fish. And this one is a little bit different. So there are animals in nature that have algae grow on them like mold and little plants and they don't want that. So there's other animals that come and help them like this yellow tang fish here. He likes the way the algae tastes. So he comes in and he eats all of it off of the turtle and then the turtle is nice and clean and the fish has food and so they help each other out. The turtle is clean now and he's super happy and he swims away. And I've got another guy that's going to come in. Oh it's a giant shark. But he's got things stuck all over him. He's got algae in his teeth. He's got a sea louse or two stuck to his back. So this cleaner fish is going to come in and eat all of that off and clean him up. And then the cleaner fish has food and the shark is nice and clean and they're both happy. So there are some animals in nature that help each other out and they coexist and help each other with things. Like this fire shrimp here, he's going to eat all the algae off of this parrotfish. He's eating it all up because he likes to eat the algae and the parrotfish doesn't like to have the algae on him. So you've got all kinds of good things that animals can do to help each other. Let's see if we can get it all off. Yay! And it's sparkly and clean. And now we've got our turtle back again, so we're back to where we started. 
All right, and there's all kinds of other things you can explore with this app, which is really cool. Um, all right, and now we're gonna come back and that was a really short book, so I got you through faster than Miss Kim normally does. It wasn't quite the whole half hour, but I hope that you enjoyed the book and I hope that you enjoyed the app and plan our calendar with us. And thanks for hanging out with me today. And Miss Kim will be back for your next Littles Lab. So um, unless anybody has any questions or anything to say in the chat, I think that's all for today. And thank you guys for coming and for joining Littles Lab. I appreciate it.